have to find the mailroom. Alright, how's everybody doing? We got game two here of the Grand Finals. Hawken versus Quick Maps, aka Jabber Jaws. This is an interesting matchup. A lot of people talk about Nemesis um, this time around being powerful because... Uh, Actually, yeah, well, because of no hunters, that's that's one thing that's really good for her. Um, and only single defense instead of double defense, I feel like it's weird. How, I don't know, somebody said that she'd be better under that rule, but I feel like she relies on double defense so much, especially against someone like a Fender. So we'll see how this goes. Good thing about Fender in this matchup is that he's got his two, uh, not his two, uh, his one, obviously his jump with the stun with full runes to take down her shield. But, you know, you have to kind of save your shield for that no moment then. So it's not an easy thing to, you know, it, it's situational, I guess I'm trying to say. Um, you, you would have to not jump in to start. And that's how he generally begins. So notice he's not doing that even right now. Oh, he has hog. All right. So yeah, Hog Hawkin. Hawkin. Hogkin. Ooh, just cut up, obliterated. I'm not sure what uh, Hawkin was thinking there. He just kept trying to fight through. He had a red, so you, I guess you know he thought, you know, I have red buff, I should be able to to deal enough damage here, but it just the damage wasn't coming out. He was fighting up against creeps, and the creeps were doing a lot of damage to him. And Jabber looking like he's just trying to, you know, seal the deal on this set. Take this whole thing right now. Not right now, but in this game. That death toll, I think, maybe hurt him a little bit in terms of, like, the trades with his abilities. Um, well, it, I do think it's the best option for Fenrir for the most part. Um, interestingly enough... Nemesis going bluestone here is you know usually you'd go death's toll and say that's the most optimal but it kind of worked out for him with the the trades on that or not just trades but rather the poke on his two in the early game it was really weird also how Hawkin was letting Jabber just bravely walk up to him and to him you know it's not something you can really do against Fender for the most part but he was respecting her enough at that point and then stopped respecting her at the red buff fight after he got that red buff, he just definitely should have got out. Wow, she's doing so much damage to him. He's got that finished boots already. Oh. Is that no beads? Jabber, though? Me and Sloth have a, have, you know, we have a rule that if you don't go beads against Fenrir, you lose. And this man definitely knows it, Jabber. I'm sure he knows it. But he is challenging it. And saying that he can get away with it. The reason being, I'm sure, is that you know he's a tanky god uh, in Nemesis. Although he can only go one defense, so I think it's you know it's super, it's really bad in this position to do that. If you had two defense, maybe, along with being Nemesis, and you have your shield. But I don't know. We'll see, man. That taunt from uh, Jabber is definitely indicative of how he's feeling this game. Man's feeling all powerful. The power has gone to his head. We can't let him win. Hawken, the lone hero left to defy this guy. Quick maps. He changed. Wait, oh no, that, I was gonna say he changed his jump stamp because I was look. We were looking at Jabber last time. Both of these guys have the worst jump stamps, by the way. The dragon one is. I mean, it's okay if you don't have any of the other cool ones, but I mean, come on. It's pretty lame. It's just the dragons in a circle. And freaking um, Hawken has the uh, SPO one, which is just really... You advertise in the SPL? Who cares? Another uh, hog opportunity here for Hawken. He's got... That would be the worst if you lose that. Another thing Hawken can look to do here is ult when she shields. That uh, should definitely be a big, uh, ooh, a big play by him. But unfortunately for him, Jabber is content to hold out that shield as long as possible. He recognizes that that's a, a possibility, and he will not uh, shield early. Bush Wookie, hey, thanks so I've much for been watching you for years on YouTube. What? First years? time I've seen you live. 
Live. I would say thanks for all the content and help with Smite. Love you, bro. Less than three. Yeah, I love you. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. It's so unnecessary. Just coming out is enough, dude. Thank you. All right, so Hawk and backing, uh, backing off here. Probably going to get his defense item going. Yeah, tier two breastplate. Uh, Jabber, we'll see if he goes for Nemean or Breastplate here. Well, almost definitely Breastplate, actually. Uh, the cooldown's really important on them to get that ultimate roll in more often, have more shields, uh, too. Just, yeah, she, you know, she's very ability-based, uh, in the early game especially. She transitions into more and more auto attack. But it's always important to have that cooldown, on the, uh, you know, especially for her ultimate. So, yeah, both of these guys can be going Breastplate and, um... Beyond that, we'll see how uh, Jabber chooses to go. Generally, you go Executioner here. But we could see something like an anti-heal item come out, uh, you know, to uh, counteract that howl. big ult here and he did uh, get the shield but uh, second shield in that uh, shell comes out surprisingly Hawkins still fighting back so well but the thing is it's kind of like he's prolonging the inevitable here he's trying to get these picks with his ult and everything and he's not getting them you know that's the difference as long as uh, Jabber continues to live then he's not going to be able to uh, uh, well, then Hawkins not going to be able to win this. He needs to start, you know, forging a comeback now. Ooh, look at this damage again from Jabber. So strong. I would say this looks like a definitely a stronger matchup for uh, for Nemesis yet again. Uh, and Jabber gets the the better end of the draw. And, you know, that's all on him and his picking ability. I think when it comes down to things like this, Jabber shines most in, uh, you know, realizing what's uh, what's the best option that's open and being able to play almost all the gods. So he, he does a really good job of that. That's one cool thing about these tournaments, you know. Um, it forces people to actually... Oh. I half knew he was going to do that. As soon as I saw the red buff fall, dude, I knew that was going to happen. Nobody likes losing their red buff there. Especially he has hog. He had hog up. You don't want to lose red buff while you have hog to one auto. It was one auto away. And he was already in such a bad losing position. He knew that there was barely anything he could do about that matchup. Um, and the way that Jabber was playing it so soundly ends up just F6ing at the red. Classic. GG. Congrats, Jabber. First place. He's back in the driver's seat, baby. Jabber Jaws. Oh, boy. Now, this is going to go straight to his ego. Thanks a lot, guys. Hawking, congrats on second, dude. Good stuff. I'm sorry. I know the finals did not go how you would hope for but, you know, sometimes you have some shitty shitty luck or also some just uh, off days, man. I think more than anything for you in that finals, uh, in that finale, was just the, you know, the matchups that you uh, that you picked into. Definitely shouldn't have left Bologna open in that instance. And then, um, yeah, Fen to Nem didn't look too great. But, happens, man. And guys, all of you, thanks so much for entering. Thanks for being the greatest. Uh, who got third? Trashman or Street? Oh, Street did. Unless Trashman didn't play. I'm not sure. Nice easy 